but they're beneficial to the whole desktop even though some people don't like them because of their partnerships with Microsoft and, and I'll and I'll, I'll explain that and the reason is because now we have both government and enterprise networks that are going more and more to the, the desktop environment for their systems because they realize the cost to upgrade to a Windows the new latest Windows Vista platform is going to be really expensive and at this point when the market is very soft um, for at least the US economy I don't know about other countries how well they're doing or not but um, uh, they're looking on uh, they're still looking on pulling back cutting costs and a full upgrade or a full replacement of peripherals and stuff in every major office that they have is just over the head so what I think is going to happen, the thing is, is if people are using it at work, average Joe, you know, sales reps, receptionists, call centers, you know, people will start getting used to the operating system itself. <coughs> and the thing is, is that when it comes to home use, it, some of those people might actually consider installing a form of Linux on their computer. And we'll probably have enough experience within a couple months or so to know how to troubleshoot things. I mean, for instance, for Windows, and this is what I'm referring to um, some of the people who don't like Linux. Uh, you know, I'm talking about, you know, Chris Brillo thinks it's interesting that Ubuntu's going, and he's like, yeah, but he personally would never use it. Um, I caught him one time saying uh, he'd rather uh, be shot in the foot than run Linux on his computer. And I was like, oh. I mean, you've been in Windows for so long. And when you have an error message, you just, without consciously thinking about it, you know how to fix it. When you install your operating system, you constant, you just unconsciously know you got to install the drivers for the audio, you got to install the drivers for the video, you got to install the uh, for the network. Maybe um, it just depends on what you know what your board is and what Windows supports and not. So if you've been in Windows environment, you do the same thing. If your wireless card doesn't work and blah blah, blah you know how to uninstall, reinstall. But we want to get you to the point where you're not even doing that anymore. It just you plug it in and it works. And I'd say majority of the hardware issues do work. Um, LCD displays. Um, the newer laptops that, we, uh, that I use seem to be okay. But I had like an older Pentium three and when I installed it, um, it didn't detect the right frequency and range of the with monitor's limits, and so it, you know, did the bleed screen. But I kind of worked that out. Is set it at 800 by 600, or 1024 by 768 manually, and it works just fine. What what I'm getting to is that um, with the combination of anti micro, uh, anti Linux campaigns from Microsoft, uh, which is just pretty much promoting their their products. Um, for enterprise because they don't want to lose that market um, and they're losing it fast. They don't want to fight the Mac jugger juggernaut. I mean, really, Mac sales have been doing really well. Um, e if it's the iPod devices or their laptops, um, they're they're getting they're 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 gaining a lot of ground. But I don't see them doing a lot of a lot of things for them except um, being very um, what's the word. Uh, do the same thing they're doing with Linux and what they're doing with Macintosh. They uh, put them on the low priority list when making software and such for either or. But I mean that's a, that's a good scenario right there with Macintosh. If I had a Macintosh and I've never used a Macintosh before, um, which I, I do have one at home, but I would use for my, use for my son's homeschooling. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just. You know, if I use it for 30 days and I don't know how things, how to get around things, I mean, I would come up with bad perceptions like that. So on a Macintosh, I I have been using it, and I've I've been slowly understanding how things get around. Um, but I can't I can't make a you know if I wrote an article today, I I would really have a very ill um, skew of things. Um, See what I'm what I'm seeing kind of is there's all these like for instance on on, on Linux uh, they they didn't take the time to like learn how to troubleshoot things and on the Mac you know that'd be like me if I, if I ran into a problem and I didn't know how to solve it 
and I didn't take the time to learn it, yeah, I'm going to give it a bad review. But, see, that's the thing. That, I can't do that. That's not, that's not fair. Um, <clears throat> the thing is, is especially your responsibility to give a perception. Now, for this one guy in New York, this technologist, I, there's been blogs and blogs and, like, sub counterculture, you know, whatever, and some of the ones that I've read, um, I can tell that they, they don't understand Linux themselves, like, to the point, you know? Um, like, one one person was talking about that, that Linux was not ready for the enterprise desktop. And she said, you know, uh, uh, system administrators don't have to worry about viruses, people downloading stuff and whatnot on their computer, and let alone driver problems and security. Now the thing is, is I wrote an article about this. If you want to see it, it's a blog at adminremote.com, and it, you pretty much will just nod your head like, yeah, that's true. I mean, for one, it's a new desktop. Um, an employee is not used to that desktop. Um, he doesn't know how to install things. That improves security. Step two, you can actually create based on asset tags of the, you know, enterprise uses assets numbers to keep track of all their equipment and you can give it put the asset net tag create a driver profile online network boot installation take less than you know 15 20 minutes to do a network boot install that's specifically for that machine or associate it to a person's account say for instance you got a database you know what computer they have. They do a network boot install. They can just download the drivers. And then she said security updates. Now that'd be a case, you know, with the, you know, like with Ubuntu right now, you have to set up to um, run, you know, manually, and you'd have to know the administrator password for root. However, that can be done as a boot up cron job, which you know goes online to the network. They have their own repository, which is maintained by the administrator. And that repository can get the security updates on boot. That's all it takes. And but but I could tell that the person didn't understand. You know, you know when these people are on these major newspapers and they're being responsible and giving a point of view, and they, based on how they write it up, they don't understand the concepts of Linux yet. Um, stick with what you know, and don't shoot from the hip. Um, I honestly, you know, I I know that based on the pre-installs I do for customers, almost 200 and some installations now, that they are more novice than anybody. They're like average Joe users, and they're not having those problems. But then I hear what these people are experiencing, and they say, don't do it, it's bad, it's bad, you shouldn't do it. And the only thing that we can we can account on right now is pre-installations like from Dell and all these companies, and that when they make the product, they don't half-ass it, which another blogger had mentioned. Don't you know? Uh, someone from ZDNet mentioned that he was concerned that we're going to half-ass the project, and based on his worries, that's what they did. So anyway, that's my YouTube video for YouTube blog video number two. I expect to see some videos comment responses what you think is the problem or something to add to the luck I'm still looking for someone to take this channel over thank you have a good weekend I'll see you guys at Ohio Linux Fest this Saturday uh, from 8 till whatever bye front rank make ready take aim fire